Hello beauties. So my name is Daisy. I am the founder and CEO of Vanish and I was actually the original creator on this YouTube channel. And yeah, I've had my business Vanish. We have an at home acne scarring microneedling kit launched in 2012 and it's been 11 years. And today I'm going to be reviewing this article, basically talking all about microneedling and let's get through this 12 page article together. It's called Skin Proliferation Stimulated by Microneedles by Horst Leibel, Leibel and Luther C. Cloth. It's published in December of 2012. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I went to Duke University and my plan was to become a dermatologist. So I actually took all the pre-med courses, organic chemistry, stats, neuroscience, microbiology, all that stuff. And I want to tell you guys reading this article since i've run my business for over 11 years you know you're doing business things you're not reading something so to read this article like brought me back to my duke university days so when i was at duke i started this youtube channel and i started reviewing products and then i accidentally got into my business spanish because you guys wanted to buy what i was using on my skin which was the microneedling um and so i decided to postpone going into dermatology and uh started my own business but this does bring back those memories and we call, I saw the sodium potassium pump and that like literally is so triggering. Like when I read that in this article, I was like, I was shaking. Okay, so I'm not gonna like read the entire thing for you because it'll be super boring, but I'm gonna try to read it in a way where can you can understand it in layman terms because yes, these articles are like super, super big words and they're kind of confusing, okay? Um, so basically they're trying to figure out like how does it help your skin without causing scarring on your face? Yeah, a classical wound is defined as disruption of tissue integrity. Um, so when there's a wound, um, there's biological phases of healing, which is hemostasis, inflammation, proliferation, and remodeling, or HIPR. So that's kind of like how the body reacts to a wound. The inflammation stage begins immediately after injury and lasts for 7 to 14 days. Then subproliferation is happened. And then subproliferation is stimulated, followed by activation of the remodeling maturation phase. The latter phase can last as long as one year or more. And the final healed state is represented by a scar tissue. Okay a cross-linked collagen formation that aligns the collagen fibers in a single direction. So one may assume that skin microneedling involves dozens or as many as 200 needles that penetrate over the skin. However, they're trying to figure out why does microneedling not cause a scar? So people think like, oh, when you're microneedling, like, aren't you creating more wounds? Aren't you creating more scars? Yes. But why does it not create scars? Okay, so basically they just review the potential mechanisms by which microneedling facilitates skin repair without scarring. So microneedling helps after the treatment of superficial burns, acne, hyperpigmentation, and stuff like that. Okay, this is really interesting because Duncan et al., and I'm going to find this article and like do another video about this, but they found that skin cuts to a depth of 0.5 to 0.6 millimeters closed by electrical cell stimulation without any trace of scar tissue. So when a skin is cut to a 0.5 to a 0.6 millimeters, there's no scar tissue. Okay, so that's why the Banisher 3.0 and the Banish products, we've always made it a 0.5 uh, millimeter. But if there's deeper cuts, that ultimately results in scar formation. So when you get cystic acne, the actual cystic acne of that part disrupts the skin further down than a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, which is why you get scarring from acne scars. And this is really interesting because for most people, we tend to get acne scars along the sides of my face, which is what I have now, and along the jawline. And that's where more of that cystic acne is. Along the forehead, I always had like teenage acne, like the little bumps. I never had it where it was cystic on my forehead, and that's why I don't have scarring on my forehead. I still have the little bumps, right? All right, so basically what they did to like figure out if, if this worked, was they put electrodes in the skin and this is our favorite our sodium potassium pumps and they're just like measuring the amount of movement in the skin to see like what is doing like what are the skin cells doing like what's going on so that's what it looks like sodium potassium pumps you guys remember that like atp sodium potassium pumps like super super traumatic for me okay so basically when a microneedle um, enters the stratum corneum and is pushed into the electrolyte of the intercellular space the only possible reaction is to sort circus of endogenous electric fields basically it goes in and this needle penetration lasts only fractions of a second so whenever you're microneedling you're not like holding the needle in your skin like it's 
it's like half a second, right? Um, and even like for me with the banisher, I like to like hold it for a little bit, but it says non-traumatic micro needles with a preferable tip radius of not more than two, three micro UM micrometers do not create a classical wound that bleeds. Yes. And this is why banishes needles are the thinnest out there in the market. They're the thinnest out there in the market because the needle is thicker. It's more likely to cause a scar. So all those dupes out there, like whatever. Okay. Like just be careful that if the needle is not good. And especially if it's too thick, it can cause scarring. So this is really interesting. In figuratively speaking, ordinary hypodermic needles really pushes the cells inside. So yes, like when you're getting a shot, you're getting the vaccine from that shot. In classical wound healing, bleeding occurs from punctured or cut vessels. In contrast, during microneedling, there is minimal to no bleeding since only the capillaries are punctured. Nevertheless, mild trauma to the skin results in a mild inflammatory response, likely due to the bradykinins and histamine re release from mast cells. So remember what we talked about, those four stages, hyper, right? The inflammatory response. We want that inflammatory response. So um, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of this, but here you can see that there's sodium ion pumps. They measured it by an electrode and they're like, they put that micro needle in there and they're just measuring like, is stuff going on? And yes, stuff is going on. Okay. Things are moving. The cells are responding. The wound healing has started. All right. Uh, so what they did was to elicit a desired response, they put about 200 needle pricks created. So for me, when I use the banisher, it has 77 gold plated titanium needles. And what I do is I press release rotate, press, release, rotate, press, release, rotate. So if you do 77 times three, it's over 200. So in this study, they did 200 needle pricks. So we're on the right track, okay? So basically those are stimulated and this EMF stimulates DNA expression of surrounding cells. Epigenetic DNA information by electrotaxy leads to an enhanced motility of epithelial and endothelial cells in the wounded area and subsequently to gene expression of growth factors that facilitate healing. So yeah, you're stimulating the cells and then like they're like, okay, we're going to kind of reproduce to produce wound healing. Ah, and then what I thought was interesting was they're saying that these prickling channels close after. So this is why Okay, when I microneedle, I just microneedle, like I microneedle sections. So for example, I'll microneedle this part of my skin and then put the vitamin C serum on right on top afterwards, okay? I do not put the vitamin C serum on before, I do it after, don't touch your skin, and then go to the next section, then put the vitamin C serum on, then go to the next section, okay? Because that thing closes, like, Closes quickly, 15 minutes. So following microneedling, hypotrophic scars raise to the skin level. So like an ice pick scar, right? It raises to the skin level. So I have ice pick scars. Um, I have hypotrophic scars. So my scars are like this, right? And so more collagen is being built. So it kind of smooths out the edges especially. But I thought what was interesting was for more hypertrophic scars fall to the skin level. So it works for both hyper and hypotrophic scarring. While the new tissue of previously hypotrophic scars requires 10 to 12 new weeks after one to three microneedling treatments, this process takes several months in hypertrophic scars and burn scars. Yes. So hypotrophic, okay, hypo, like the ice pick ones, takes about 10 to 20 weeks after one to three microneedling treatments. You guys, this is why I say you got to be consistent. Like you got to be consistent. I mean, 10 to 20 weeks. And if you have hypertrophic scars and burn scars, that's going to take significantly longer over a few months. But I actually didn't realize that it actually works for both types of scarring. It does say that the scars do not respond to microneedling as well as hypotrophic. So if you have raised scarring, or burn scars, it, it probably won't do as well as like the indentations. The failure rate is 30% and they don't quite know why, um, but still a failure rate of 30%, you might as well give it a shot, you know? Okay, so Safanov reported that keloids respond to microneedling. He treated inactive keloids, but he pointed out that a certain minimal, minimal risk must be considered. In all of his burn scar cases, he emphasized that a long transformation of up to eight months may be re required depending on the case. That's really interesting because at Banish, we say don't use it on keloid scarring. Apparently it can work on keloid scarring. I personally wouldn't just feel comfortable recommending it blindly. Um, but yeah, eight months. So the, the name of the game is you got to be consistent with this. Okay. And I thought was really interesting was I talked about the silicone scar sheets in here. I'm not going to read all of it, but 
basically the, the the conclusion was the poor quality research means a great deal of uncertainty prevails the effectiveness of silicon gel, silicon gel sheeting and the prevention and treatment of hypertrophic and keloid scars so they're just saying it's inconclusive as to whether the silicon gel sheets work personally i've never used them i don't know too much about them so i can't say much you guys my I have a lot of depth in the knowledge of microneedling, but I don't really know like everything about everything else. <sighs> okay, what I thought was really interesting was I talked about um, like heat treatments and lasers. So they were comparing the CO2 laser versus microneedling. While both methods induce minimally invasive sites needed for autologous cell therapy, the CO2 laser resulted in superficial epidermal papillary dermis defects of 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters, okay? covered by thin eschar coated with nature collagen. So the actual CO2 laser only went 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters. In contrast, microneedle intervention produced thin vertical skin fissures reaching up to 0.5 millimeters in the mid dermis and injuring dermal blood vessels without surrounding tissue necrosis. So tissue necrosis is like death, right? Basically what it's saying is they both created small epidermal defects, which allowed the, um, like the cells to like do its thing. However, the microneedling treatment has the advantage of lacking the devitalized tissue and enabling vascular excess for the transplanted cells. Basically, in layman's terms, it means that the CO2 laser would just burn the cells. It just like killed it, right? Whereas the microneedling didn't, okay? So advantage of lacking devitalized tissue and enabling vascular access, all right, for the transplanted cells. Because yes, you want those new cells to have like all the nutrients and not die. Okay. So yeah, they're just saying how if you have erythema, which is like the redness on the skin, it lasts for about 48 hours on Caucasian skin. It decreases by 50%, four to six hours after the treatment. Honestly, for me, after microneedling, nobody can tell. Maybe it's because I just have thick skin. I think the first time you do it, you do get a slight redness. But honestly, it seems like the more I do it, the less red my skin has gotten. The proliferation phase starts immediately after microneedling and may reach its peak after two months. So that's why I say you apply your vitamin C serum on top, like right after. So yes, like your skin is still healing even like two months, like even weeks afterwards. Like stuff is still going on. And then remodeling. Interesting fact is that the new collagen formation is deposited from a depth of 0.6 millimeters upwards and towards the basal membrane. In most cases, when needles with a length of 1.5 millimeters are used. So you guys, it's saying that collagen is forming at 0.6 and higher. So there's no need to go deeper, okay? More is not more in this case. And this is that beautiful image there. So they stained the collagen purple and you can see it's not that deep into the skin. Skin improvement is evident three to four weeks after a microneedle session. However, collagen maturation needs time, especially to transform into the more elastic collagen type one. So yes, you need to be consistent because it takes some time. Skin improvement is evident three to four weeks. Honestly, for me, after using Vanish, I see improvements the next day. I see this amazing glow, the edges of my scar smoother. But yeah, it does take time. So it's also saying that heat exposure can damage like the burn vessel proteins. So if you have like damage from heat, like whether it's from radio frequency or from lasers or whatnot, microneedling is a really good way to like stimulate the, the kind of cells in the skin to grow back. It says, we would like to emphasize that in contrast to ablative procedures, post-op infections after microneedling are very unlikely due to the rapid closure of the stratum corneum than a maximum of 15 minutes. Bell et al. have not reported any negative side effects. And also, I thought it was really interesting that it says very good results have been obtained after microneedling of flourishing acne. Acne is triggered by androgens that stimulate increased proliferation of keratinocytes that block the ducts of sebaceous glands. After one or two treatment, the hyperproliferation of keratinocytes may be downregulated. Thus, it can only be speculated that MMPs induced by microneedles somehow balance or equivalent skin proliferation. So you guys, it's basically saying here that microneedling is actually really good for preventing maybe future acne because what it's happening is that when you microneedle those like thick those like skin cells that get stuck that causes the acne like proliferates right like kind of goes away like you're breaking it up right you're aerating your lawn um so that those skin like just doesn't get clogged or whatnot so it doesn't get clogged and it doesn't block your ducts of your sebaceous gland so it doesn't the skin doesn't block your uh your pores your oil glands your pores this is why like so many of our customers from banish says that after using the banish kit it actually helps their acne 
Like, I feel like ever since I've been microneedling regularly, I don't, I still get active acne here and there, especially hormonally, but like so much less frequently. And I swear to God, it's because I've been microneedling consistently. And that's, that's what it says. Okay. I thought that was really great. And yeah, it was not funded by any grant or whatnot. And that is the, the article of how, uh, microneedling is the Ted Bundy of all, of all skincare. Okay. So Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Let me know what other articles you want me to talk about for microneedling. Um, there's so many out there. So I I've got a stack of papers and good thing I graduated Duke University in three years, two majors, a minor, and my pre-med because I get through this shit quickly. All right. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.